Hello, in this video, we're going to discuss Kotlin Symbol Processing. So Kotlin Symbol Processing, or KSP in short, is a Kotlin alternative to Java annotation processing. And since KSP is an alternative to Java annotation processing, you really need to know a little bit about Java annotation processing in order to understand the context of KSP. So if you need a reminder about annotation processing, I already created a video on this subject, and I will post a link to this video somewhere there below. So let's just to remind you at a very high level what's Java annotation processing and where it comes into the picture. Currently, we see on your screen the build process using Gradle build system. And it consists of several kind of large steps. And one of the steps is compilation. Java annotation processing takes place during this compilation step. So let's double click on this compilation step. And it starts with front end compilation, then proceeds to annotation processing. The output from annotation processing goes to backend compilation. And then lastly, we generate this bytecode inside class files. Now, the data structure used to pass kind of data from front end to the backend steps is called AST, abstract syntax tree. And that's basically just a tree representation of the structure of your source code. All right, that's the compilation step on JVM using annotation processing. Now, let's discuss what's going on when we compile using Kotlin compiler. Specifically, in this case, we're talking about Kotlin K1 compiler, the old Kotlin compiler. There is a newer version, K2, of Kotlin compiler, which is being developed right now. But KSP, Kotlin symbol processing, still doesn't work with K2. And therefore, uh, when we discuss KSP, we need to understand what's going on with K1 compiler. So just like with Java compiler, it starts with front-end compilation. And then the results of this front-end compilation are fed into compiler plugins. The output of these compiler plugins goes to backend compilation. And lastly, we get the bytecode inside class files. Now, this scheme looks very similar to what we've had in a Java compilation step. But instead of annotation processors, now we have these compiler plugins. And it might look like uh, these entities, uh, annotation processors in Java and compiler plugins in Kotlin, are exactly the same entities, but that's not the case. Compiler plugins are much more versatile, much more powerful tools than just standard Java annotation processors, but it's outside the scope of this specific video. And furthermore, what you see on your screen right now is just one of the places where you can plug compiler plugins into the Kotlin compilation process. So for example, you can also plug plugins inside the backend compilation step, but again, outside the scope of this video. So we have the plugins here between frontend and the backend compilation steps and the data structures that are being used to convey the data from the front end to the back end are called, well, there are two data structures. The first one is called PSI, and the second one is called binding context. Now, PSI stands for Program Structure Interface, and for our purpose here, you can think of it as of AST, abstract industry. There is really a lot of similarities between PSI and AST, and in addition to PSI, we have also this binding context, which contains additional semantic information about the different nodes inside the PSI tree. Now, all of that might seem very complex, and it is indeed complex, but it turns out that we don't really need to deal with PSI and binding context when we use KSP. In fact, it's the goal of KSP to relieve us of the details of these data structures. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. So first of all, these compiler plugins that sit between front-end and back-end compilation steps are very challenging to write. And for example, if we would like to replace all Java annotation processors with proper Kotlin compiler plugins, that will be a very difficult task to do because the APIs are different, the approaches are different, everything is different. So basically you will need to rewrite everything from scratch. And therefore Google wanted to simplify this task. Google wanted to allow us to implement plugins, compiler plugins, in a more simpler manner. So Kotlin Simple Processing is a compiler plugin all by itself. Here we see it sits between the front-end compilation step and the back-end compilation step. And Kotlin uh, KSP is a very interesting plugin because it doesn't do much by itself, but it allows you to plug additional plugins into the compilation process. And these plugins that you can plug into KSP plugin are called lightweight plugins. 
Why lightweight? Well, because KSP exposes a simplified API to the outside world. As we said before, you know, the API, the way to write uh, Kotlin compiler plugins, that's a challenging task because the API is very um, tricky. You know, it's very large because Kotlin compiler plugins are very powerful and the data structures are tricky. So KSP, what it does, it takes all this complexity, abstracts it out, and exposes a simpler API that we can use to write lightweight plugins. As you might guess, these plugins will be more limited than the general Kotlin compiler plugins, but they're simpler to write. And specifically, Google designed KSP with uh, annotation processors in mind. So basically, KSP should make porting annotation processors from Java to Kotlin simpler. So, ASP is a Kotlin compiler plugin, which implements the plugin architecture by itself, but with a simpler API. Again, it's a plugin that sits right there between front-end and back-end compilation steps, and you can kind of plug additional lightweight plugins into this plugin. So it opens the door for more plugins to be added, but those plugins use simpler API, and therefore they are simpler to write. And of course, all of that is targeted towards primary annotation processors. Now, KSP, if we kind of discuss it fundamentally, KSP is an adapter plugin. So adapter is a design pattern or architectural pattern, if you want, which basically says the following. We have some kind of an API here and we want to expose another API. So we put some kind of block of code right in between these two APIs, which converts one API into another API. And that's exactly what this KSP plugin does. And of course, it's tricky because it's not that simple, but generally speaking, that's the idea. You put KSP inside this compilation process and KSP is a compiler plugin. And then you can plug into KSP other plugins, which are just simpler to implement. And they are very straightforward to implement if you start with Java annotation processors. And the question that you might have now is, okay, Vasily, you explained so much and all that sounds very complex, but why do we actually need this KSP stuff? Because as you probably know, you could use Java annotation processors in Kotlin using so-called KPT plugin, capped KPT plugin that allows you to basically just, you know, take your existing Java annotation processors and throw them into your Kotlin code bases and it would work. So why do we need KSP? Well, it's a very technical and very interesting question, but I will not go into the details. I will just answer at a very high level. To let the existing Java annotation processors work with Kotlin in such a seamless way, KAPT implements a very interesting hack, very tricky hack, and it adds a very uh, major build overhead, um, build time overhead. And the hack is basically, well, annotation processors, Java annotation processors, they can't work with Kotlin data structure. They don't know about RSI and PSI, sorry. They don't know about binding context. And therefore what KPT does as its first step is just generating a lot of Java stabs from your Kotlin code. And this takes a lot of time and that's why KPT is so slow. So KSP by not being restricted by Java ecosystem, by being kind of Kotlin native, not as Kotlin native, but kind of native kind of Kotlin natural approach, it does not need to generate Java steps and therefore KSP works much quicker on Kotlin or mixed projects than Java annotation processors using KPT Kotlin uh, compiler plugin. And on top of this performance gain, KSP by being Kotlin compiler plugin can understand Kotlin code much better. So it's much smarter when working with Kotlin code because, for example, Java annotation processors wouldn't know about the semantics and the kind of very handy uh, stuff in constructs inside Kotlin. And therefore, by using KPT, you basically kind of dump down the Kotlin programming language into Java and then you can lose some information. Specifically, for example, you can lose type information, which of course, Kotlin is type safe and Java is not exactly type safe when it comes to nullability. And this kind of information you will lose if you convert Kotlin code to Java and therefore KSP can interpret this semantic information much better than the annotation processors using KPT. So KSP is better in terms of performance and it can handle Kotlin code much better. And by the way, KSP can also handle Java code. So you are not restricted to just pure Kotlin code bases when you use KSP. You can use KSP in mixed projects as well. So that's why we need KSP, performance and better support for Kotlin. Now, 
how do we migrate from KPT to KSP? So let's say you have an annotation processor that you use in your app, and now you want to replace it with KSP. Well, first of all, it's very, very straightforward in most cases. For example, here we have this uh, room annotation processor for room ORM, and I used this KPT before, now I just comment it out, and instead of KPT, I just use this KSP directive. Of course, this means that somewhere inside my Gradle configuration, I applied the KSP plugin first, but once you applied KSP plugin, it's exactly like KAPT with some kind of caveats. So the first caveat is that the respective annotation processor room in this case must implement KSP support first. So for users, for us, it's very simple to migrate from KAPT to KSP, but for the maintainers of these annotation processors, it's actually quite a bit of work to support KSP. And therefore, first of all, we need to check that the respective annotation processors actually work with KSP. And as of today, many of them, Room, Dagger, Glide, and other popular uh, tools, they all support KSP as far as I know. And in addition, some annotation processors might actually require you to use a different artifact. So be aware of that, check the documentation. And of course, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, changing, for example, from a room compiler to room compiler KSP or something like that. And that's pretty much it for this video. Now you understand that KSP Kotlin symbol processing is a replacement for annotation processors in Kotlin. You understand why it was developed by Google in order to allow us to migrate our annotation processors to Kotlin compiler plugin architecture uh, quicker and easier. You understand why we wanted to do that in the first place because KPT is slow and it does not understand Kotlin syntactics. And in addition to that, you also know that migrating from CAPT to KSP is really straightforward for us users. You just need to check the documentation of the respective annotation processors. And with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.